In the last video, we talked about control flow, which are if then else statements, which allow you to do different things depending on the state of your application. Today, we're going to talk about loops, which allows you to do repetitive things without specifying each iteration individually. In this video, we're going to bring you through loops by looking at number one, what are loops? Number two, the while loop, and number three, the for loop. Let's dive right in. If you were doing the Fibonacci number exercise in day two, you might notice that to produce 20 Fibonacci numbers, you would need to run almost the same thing for 20 times, right? So ideally what you do is you have number one equals to one, number two equals to one, and then number three equals to number one plus number two, and then so no, the third number in the Fibonacci chain sequence is two. And then after you do that, you then reassign things. So now you have to shift everything by one. So number one now equals to number two, and number two now equals to number three, and number three again equals to number one plus number two, capturing the fact that each Fibonacci number is the sum of the last two Fibonacci numbers. Then we go to number three, we have three. And then we have five and so on and so forth. But this is quite stupid, right? Because you are defining the initial conditions here, and then you're essentially typing this thing, you know, again and again, because we want to generate the fourth Fibonacci number. Again, we need to do number one equals to number two, number two equals to number three. I'm boring myself as I am typing it like that. So loops allow us to not do this. Loops allow us to specify a condition, and if the condition isn't met, we can do whatever statement block is within the loop. Let's see the simplest loop, which is a while loop. So let's say while n3 is smaller than 10. So n3 is 5 now. n3 plus we add 1 to n3. And it also prints what n3 is in this time. So what is this saying? So we're now seeing a new keyword with while. While has the same meaning as the word while in English. So while this condition here is true, which is n3 is smaller than 10, while this, we execute the following statement block. And we know it's a statement block because it's indented by four spaces to the right. So what this does is while n3 is smaller than 10, we want to plus 1 to n3, print out n3 until n3 is no longer smaller than 10. If we execute this, choice of ipython, we can see that n3 has been incremented once, printed out until it's larger than 10, and all we needed to do was to specify the increment once, and it ran itself for five times until the condition is no longer true. The other thing we can do is called a for loop. So a for loop is a special thing that allows us to loop over a list, right? So we can say for x in a list, so let's say we can print x. So what is this saying? We have a new keyword for, and for takes two different components. So we first need to say for this item, and then we need to use the keyword in this list. So we have a list of three numbers, one, two, three. For this, we need to do the following statement block, which is print x. We, again, we know that it's a statement block because it's indented four spaces to the right. And what this means is for a variable container in a list, the for loop would take each element in the list and assign it to the variable. It then executes the control flow and you can access that variable. That variable would take on firstly value of the first element and the value of the second element and then finally the value of the third element. Let's run this and see what happens. So we can see that x has in turn taken on the value of each element and we've printed each element out. Notice that because this is a control statement block, we don't actually need to use the word or the variable x. We can say for x in one, two, three. We can just say print hello world. In which case, we have printed hello world three times. 
one of the tricks that we need to learn is we can generate any list that goes from 0 to any number with the special function in Python called range. We do range2, which generates a list of 0, 1. So what this means is generated a range list of 2 starting at 0. So we have two elements, and it starts at 0, so the elements are 0 and 1. What we can do here is for x in range 3, print x. And what it's done is it has generated a list of 0, 1, and 2. There's also a shortcut to print something three times, like that. And that's all there is to it. So we have learned about what are for loops. We've learned about the while loop, for loop. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually use loops in your Python code. I'll see you guys next time.